like it was done 2,000 years ago. They still use pipes, they still use holes that are full of fire, they um, still use wooden hand tools. Um, there really isn't very much that's changed in the hand-blown industry. In an age which glorifies the machine, the skill of the glass blower remains a challenge to time. Some say it is the most exciting show on earth. This ancient art of glass blowing is alive and growing at Pilgrim Glass in the hills of West Virginia. It's like being a sculptor, a painter, a, uh, all rolled into one. And each man has the responsibility of getting the gob of glass from himself to the next person at the right temperature and in the right shape so that it can be covered again or whatever the uh, pieces they're making. Uh, they also are involved in the making of thousands of different pieces, each one needing its own particular size and weight and so forth. But for the masterworks, there are four gathers, what we call gathers involved. That means the uh, pipe has to be stuck into a tank that's blazing at between 1800 and 2100 degrees. And on the end of that pipe, the blower has to be able to gather without any blisters, without any flaws, a hunk of glass that we call a gather. Then that gather in its molten state is blocked in order to cool it and distribute the heat on that ball so that it can then be handed to the next guy who adds more glass to that ball. And in the case of a large piece like our masterworks, it takes four, I think four to six gathers of glass before it gets to its full size, which is between 30 and 45 pounds of glass at 2,000 degrees. That glass is about the consistency of cold honey and is on the end of a one and a half inch stick, essentially. And these guys have to be able to keep the shape of that ball, allow it to cool, not too much, but enough so that it can be worked, and block the heat so that the heat and the shape of that ball is completely consistent. So when it's handed to the blower, who has to essentially shape that piece while it's still molten and formless, before it goes into the mold that gives it its final finished form uh, and with an effective weight because of the length of the pipe of more like 65 pounds. You're talking some major uh, strength and agility. Glass factories around the world have marveled at Pilgrim's ability to blow by mouth these impressive oversized 30 inch high masterwork glass vases. Pilgrim's cranberry glass is fashion's richest, ripest color. It's so rare and collectible because the only way to make cranberry glass is to fuse solid gold with lead crystal. Cranberry glass is the achievement of only a few of the world's great glassmakers. In Europe, it's called gold ruby. We are the largest producers of cranberry glass in the world. And that's a big, bold statement, but it's true. For more than a decade, Pilgrim Glass has been experimenting with different colored glasses cased one over another and chemically calculated so that each glass is compatible with the surrounding glasses. This is Pilgrim's Cameo Glass, a painstakingly slow process of carving each of many layers away, exposing the color beneath to create a finished work of art. An American original of Cameo Glass. The very first step is figuring out what colors will be able to successfully be separated when they're being carved because when we get the piece to carve, it's the outside color. It may look black, but we have to be able to know when and where and what the other color, the colors are beneath. So first is a lot of planning. A lot of people think it's painted on. 
all of those colors are in there. We just have to, as you put it, chip away until we can unveil them. We can virtually create them. Anything made of glass, and that's what makes Pilgrim Glass a collector's dream.